Daytona, a place where the lines between dream and reality can become blurred. For Kenny Wallace, the Daytona dream has been a reoccurring nightmare. A massive accident down in turn one has claimed Kenny Wallace. In 10 Daytona 500 starts, he's never found the top 10. But Daytona also offers redemption. Here, in Victory Lane. Going into 2012, listen, I'm focused and I want to win bad. Kenny's 22 years in the sport have been defined by early success and recent struggle. Trouble up in turn number one. Kenny Wallace gets turned around, pounds the safer barrier hard. Everybody was making fun of me. 2011 was all about me getting my dignity back. Here goes Kenny Wallace, takes second away from Carl Edwards. Last season, Kenny revitalized his career. And now he's been given a chance at salvation. Daytona never gets old. I just, I really want to make this race. He has two months to prepare for a race that can make or break an entire season. I work overtime because I still want to be in the game. But the run to Daytona can be filled with an off season of unexpected challenges. Nothing went as planned this winter. Me and you can't afford the $8,000 fee. This car is the holy grail. If we lose this car, we're done. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I've learned positive mental attitude. Hey, we'll overcome and prevail. The only thing that can get me right now is the fear of failure. He'll need every bit of confidence to beat the tall odds that stand before him. So Kenny's sights are fixed on chasing Daytona. All right, I will, I will, I will make the Daytona 500. The 2011 season well, was a great year for me. In my own world, I was victorious. It was awesome. But at the end of the season, I, I don't think I could have ran another race. I mean, all the way to the very end of the year, where are we going to get money for the race at Phoenix? Where it wouldn't end. It, it took me to my knees. I don't know if anybody else could go through what I went through. But I'm tough. I'm really, really tough. I mean, I always prevail. Oatmeal is like ice cream to me. Ever since Mark Martin said, you got to eat right, I said, well, what should I eat in the morning? Oatmeal and apples. I went. Oatmeal and apples. Now I'm addicted to oatmeal. I love it. Mark Martin became my text friend. He introduced me to this new food group that I've never seen before. You know, I was the chicken nugget guy. Waffle fries and Coke, Pepsi, sweet tea, just pouring sugar down me. It was bad. The older you get, the harder you have to work. So I decided to start working out. I don't work out to go, hey, look at me, I'm working out, I'm gonna be a better race car driver, you know? I work out because it's a time for me to clear my mind. Kinda of helps my ADD a little bit. 10, 11, 12. I find the biggest mistake people make all the time is they try to be pie pie when really you're just trying to be Jimmy Johnson. Physically fit, run, get muscle tone. You don't want to get in the car and be, oh. You need to have the muscles in the right place. I like this workout a lot, because it helps with my gas pedal and my brake. I tend to do it a little bit slower.
Kenny Wallace has been competing at NASCAR's highest levels for over 22 years. He's become an icon in the sport, while never shying away from a camera. You know, everybody's wondering where the next Rusty Wallace or Dale Earnhardt's coming from, and I'm confident to say, here I am. It didn't take long for Kenny to put his mark on the sport, right alongside his older brother, Rusty carving a name for himself in NASCAR's nationwide series. Though he's never won a race at NASCAR's premier level, Kenny still has plenty of fond memories after 344 Sprint Cup starts. There are some highlights in my career that have nothing to do with winning that made me so popular. Rusty Wallace has some help. That's Kenny Wallace, little brother. Rusty Wallace comes to the flag and wins the butt shootout. I had little Kenny behind me. He stuck it right up there. We went to the front. It was great. Then all of a sudden, we go to Talladega, you know, in 2000, and I pushed Dale Earnhardt to the last win of his life. I mean, the last win of his life. He's motioning the 55 car of Kenny Wallace. Give me a buck. Come on, Kenny. Give me a show. All the Earnhardt fans, they loved me for finishing second. Now, I might be a B-plus driver, but that's okay. I'm a good race car driver. Kenny's NASCAR career is no longer limited to a life behind the wheel. He also spends his time in front of the camera, bringing his unique personality to millions of television viewers. You, the fans, are always upset with him. It's your chance to pile drive him. You're pile driving him right now. You're getting him down. So Robin Pemberton, he stands up and he goes, boys, have at it. We're going to get the TV ratings up. We're going to put our sport back on top. Kenny has thrived on air, but he's taken a beating on track. Todd Bodine and Kenny Wallace. Don't fire. A heavy crash. Wow. You know, I was so upset that I allowed myself to race so bad this is going to be a pretty borderline lap for kenny kenny wallace just got bumped out of the field i drove for such junky teams smoke pouring out of the 28 and boy kenny wallace had a nice run going for that team 2011 was all about me getting my dignity back everybody was making fun of me oh herman you just need to quit racing and, and go do go do tv you need to run and go do your dirt car i'm like you don't define me. You, you, you know, nobody tells me who I am. I know I'm a good race car driver. I mean, I'm really good. And I don't say that sarcastically. I just know I am. In 2011, Kenny drove for RAB Racing, a small independent nationwide series team competing against some of the sport's deepest pockets and biggest names. bring his racing career back into the limelight. Kenny made some drastic sacrifices for the good of his new team. Everything looks good. It's coming together. Yeah. A lot of stuff coming together last week. Right. Tell me what I need to do. I felt like I needed to repair the damage that I'd done to myself. I wanted to fix what I, what I got wrong. So in the 2011 season, I literally drove on God is my witness, drove for that. I never received a check from RAB Racing. And, and I felt that it was an investment in my career. As the 2011 season began, it didn't take long for Kenny's investment to start paying dividends. Kenny Wallace having a great run. The car is really, really good. No changes. Because he got to be smiling ear to ear. We could see Kenny Wallace in Victory Lane here tonight. Right on by goes Kenny Wallace. Cut down that middle lane and holy crap, you're on top. If this thing goes green, we can win. For the first time in 10 years, Kenny Wallace has put four straight top tens together. How about that? How good does it feel to be back? Because you guys are really running well, Kenny. It feels really good. You know, I mean, honestly, I mean, I know we got a good team, but we are a mid-level team. So I just want to say something. I am sweating, 
I am exhausted because I gave it everything I had. Kenny finished the season seventh in points, proving that he and the RAB racing team could achieve lofty ambitions. Now they've set their sights on an even bigger prize. My car owner, Robbie Benton, came to me. He says, if I can put a, a cup deal together for the Daytona 500 in 2012, are you interested? Well, yes, I'm interested. But, you know, if we're not going to do it right, I don't want to be involved in it. I, I just, I ruined my career here the last four years picking startup teams and people that don't want to race and people that all they want to do is make money, you know. And uh, here we are, you know, and we, we plan on racing. The whole deal was done right. I'm as excited right now as I've ever been in my career. Chasing Daytona is brought to you by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Goodyear, more driven. With the 2012 NASCAR season just weeks away, the RAB racing team is hard at work as Daytona approaches. But this year, the weight on Kenny Wallace's shoulders is significantly less. You know, everybody says to me all the time, Mark, they say, oh my God, what happened to you? You're so frail. Are you okay, Kenny? You look sick. I've been this exact same weight now for 10 months. There are a couple people that told me I look good. One of them was Jimmy Johnson. He said, I don't want to say this in the wrong way, but you look a lot better, Herman. I said, well, I know what you mean. It's kind of like that movie Sling Blade. Hey, boy, I'm going to put my arm around you. You don't think funny of me. All right, put this up there between the twins. OK. So this is the measurement that's a little uncomfortable. So last year when I measured you, right. your natural waist for the suit that you wore last year was 38, and right. your natural waist this year I measured you is 34.5. Oh, wow. Okay, we're gonna look at the... So I lost uh, a lot of inches. Until the slimmer fire suit arrives, Kenny will wear last year's for a preseason photo shoot with other Toyota drivers. 2006, I was 195, and the lowest I got was 150. Wow. Right now, as, as healthy as I try to eat and all, everything, <laughs> I get about 10.30 at night. You're all I want is like a swig of Coke. That's all I want. So, like, kind of, like... <laughs> it puts your cravings away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets my shakes uh, away, you know? Hey, stay right where you are. Okay, face me straight on. Great. Turn to your left. Looks good. Okay, look down at me. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Elvis has left the building. Sponsorship dollars are the lifeblood of NASCAR, a fact that Kenny knows all too well after his many years in the sport. Talk about pressure. Kenny Wallace came here with a white race car. The only thing on here is Mike Wallace, a $50 sponsor. Kenny Wallace needs a sponsor. I'll sell your product. This is it. This is what saved Eel River Racing of number one mayonnaise. In 2011, he competed in all 34 nationwide series events. But his car looked drastically different from many of them. Nearly every sponsor on each of the number 09 cars was actually sold by Kenny himself. You know, Kyle Petty said it right. I'm an old school racer. And, and I didn't know it because I feel young. I didn't get it until I kind of looked around me. Come to find out, drivers don't go get their own sponsors. They have people. I mean, who are these people, you know? Well, then I come to find out, you, like somebody like Richard Childers, they got a big old round desk up there, and they got probably six, eight people that sit down with suit and ties. Me, I call people, and if you do get a hold of them, you make a cold call. Hey, this is Kenny Wallace. How you doing? You know, they don't want to talk. Hey, email me that. I'm like, no, I got you on the phone right now. Let's talk about it. It's very, very tiresome. It wears me thin. But once again, driving the car is the payoff. I just love driving the race car. It's like an amusement park ride, and, and, I, and the ticket is very expensive. The price of admission proved too costly for Red Bull. 
as their NASCAR operation was shut down in the off-season. In its five-year existence, the team found modest success in NASCAR, winning two races, while making their fleet of race cars a desirable commodity. As January began, everything was in place at RAB Racing to purchase a Red Bull car for Kenny Wallace's dash to the Daytona 500. Though sometimes, the best laid plans still take time. Hello? Hey, Robbie, how you doing? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, here we are, we have a great sponsor in American Ethanol. We got the money we need, we're going to the Daytona 500. Except, there's one thing we don't have, it's one. The car. Hey, we'll overcome and prevail. I mean, that's just the way we do it. I mean, we were overachievers last year, we'll be overachievers again this year. Alright, thanks, Robbie. Bye. Kimberly? Are you ready for drama? Red Bull is not selling any cars. So here we are now without a car for the Daytona 500 because the whole Red Bull deal blew up. What are you going to do? I'm going to cry. <laughs> so anyway, what it means now is now we're not going to be able to test. So are you going to run or not? Or is Robbie looking for another car? No, we're going to run the Daytona 500. It's just we got to find a car now. And it's, it's a big hiccup. But hey, if, if, uh, if Brad Keselowski's brother could make it, what, Brian Keselowski? He made it in some old I know. turd car. We've been through worse. Kim is my coach. So during this whole process, she's like, you'll be OK. You're good at Daytona. You know what to do. Don't worry. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get in the shower. I've been down this road so many times, it's really nothing that can get me right now. The only thing that can get me right now is the fear of failure. At the Wallace House, each new NASCAR season starts the same way. With a little paperwork for Kenny, and his wife, Kim. You know, to be a race car driver, you just don't go get in that race car. You know, to go to Daytona, you, they have to approve you. You can't just show up at a, at a racetrack where you go 206 mile an hour and just race. Application fee for 2012. The economy's in the tank, sponsors are leaving. But our new fee went from about $3,000, it says, new application fee for a gold driver's license is $8,000. We can't afford, me and you can't afford the $8,000 fee. <laughs> Mommy. It'll get better. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's get down to serious business here. Date of birth, 8, 23 of 91. Me funny, me so silly. They've asked my social security number, my date of birth, my home phone, my cell phone, my business phone, fax number. They still have those? My God, they asked for the same thing over and over here. Do you think uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. does what we're doing right now? I bet somebody fills it out for him and says, sign this. Probably. Okay. Okay, I think we're done. Crowd goes wild. Wallace done with his application. The NASCAR season unofficially dawns in mid-January when teams arrive in Daytona for testing. 
giving them an opportunity to see their off-season work in action. While also acclimating to new faces. The goal, however, is too simple. Find more speed before next month's Daytona 500. Notably absent from the test was RAB Racing and their driver. While they continue to wait for their Daytona 500 car to arrive, Kenny heads home to get a cut above the rest. Just, you know, like, like normal, just trim me up. Okay. Make me look younger than what I am. Okay, sit down. All right. <laughs> Can I watch testing? Sure. All right. Brandy, this is killing me not being there at Daytona. Dad, but you don't need practice. You're good enough. Oh, that's nice of you. <laughs> but still, you know, I mean, I should be there. And I can't not watch. I should be out there practicing right now. It ate me alive for me to be getting my hair cut by my daughter and watching them practice without me. You know, this is a circus, man. They roll on with you or without you. You want it really short or you just want to trim? Well, you know, I mean, not real short because... A it's, little longer right now? Yeah, well, it's, it's cool down there in, in Daytona, you know? Like, if we were in July, I'd have you cut it all off. Right, okay. So, you know, just trim me up. Okay. You know what's crazy is I go down there going, yeah, I'm going to run the Daytona 500. That's because I got a positive attitude. Yeah, remember when I was little and you tell me a while that never says they can't? When you were teaching me how to do the, um, the clutch on the dirt bike. Right. And I can't get it. Right. And I said, a Wallace never says they can't. That's why you have so many clients. You know why, don't you? Why? Because I raised you right. <laughs> All right, I think you're done. You got to look and see if it's OK. You did perfect. Good. It's awesome. Thank you. I love it. The window of opportunity to fix yourself up is very small in NASCAR. I bite my teeth at night. I sleep like this. I guess I dream so much. I I always have this dream that I, that they're getting ready to throw the green flag and I can't get my seatbelt on. Well, I've destroyed my teeth. I woke up to Prince this morning. I was, I was literally dancing in my, uh, in my underwear. <laughs> I don't like going to the dentist. I'm a wimp. Should I be afraid? No, it's me. I know. <laughs> I love you. All right, you're going to feel a little pressure. <laughs> That day I was going in there and I was uh, getting a cap put on. I told her, I said, the only thing that kills me about this is that this is the only thing that makes it to where I can't, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like punishment. It's the only time, really. <laughs> Simply qualifying for this year's Daytona 500 would make Kenny Wallace smile. It's a race his father, Russ, never had the opportunity to run. But racing success has always been in the Wallace family's blood. I mean, my dad was good. He won over 400 A mains throughout Missouri and Illinois, and dad passed that winning attitude down to us boys. The Wallace name has been synonymous with NASCAR for over three decades. Oldest brother, Rusty, was the winner of 55 Sprint Cup races and the 1989 championship. The family's passion is success. Youngest brother, Kenny, continues to follow in his family's footsteps. Though there's always added pressure when your last name is Wallace. Kenny carries a lot of pressure inside of him that people don't know about. Because his brother is so so accomplished at what he did, Kenny's competing. And uh, he's just, you know, just at times it's hard on him, and other times he's, he's just like today. He signed a new sponsor. It's like a kid in a candy store. Late last October, Russ Wallace suffered a stroke. And the Wallace family 
lost its patriarch. Hi, Mama. Hey, baby, how you doing, honey? I'm doing good, I love you. I love you more. Awesome. Hey, Sophie. What are you doing, huh? She's trying to get acclimated. OK, so uh, you mentioned that I need to get Dad's trophies gathered up. Yeah. A uh, gentleman from the Hall of Fame called, and they're going to do an exhibit on short track racers. Right. And they wanted something from Dad. Right. They wanted trophies, uniform, pictures, anything we can come up with. It's a shame we gave away so many of Dad's trophies. Well, yeah, but we had so many. What, what do you... What, do you used to call them, dust collectors? Well... <laughs> <laughs> no, you just couldn't find a place to put them all. Right. Because you know, so. he won so much. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what you're supposed to do? That's great. Yeah. Okay. I know I would never throw his last uniform away, but... I'll um, try to find it. All right. Don't cry, Mama. It's out there. I love you. Love you too. Okay. Uh, you got right. the key? Yep, I got the key, okay. so I'll go out here and get them. It's very hard to go digging through mom and dad's garage. Whew. A lot of stuff from the past in here. It's gonna be hard when we really have to clean it up for real. You know, I don't know how long mom's gonna be able to live in this big old house and this big old garage, but I know we're gonna have to go through every box, and there are a lot of things there that we need to keep. Wow. Let the record show that Mr. and Mrs. Russell Wallace appeared in open court and acknowledged that they consented to their son, Rusty Wallace, 16 years of age, to race at Lake Hill Speedway. Oh, there's some good stuff here. Oh, that's a good piece. Mom and Dad kept everything. Okay, I know what I need. I need this one right here. Wow, oh my. Charlia Speedway meets mid-season championship. Russ Wallace, 1967. Oh, good picture of dad. My God, look at there. It's a painted picture or something. Boy, dad whipped their butt back then. Dad made me tougher. I grew up people hating us because my dad won. It was so weird to me, I couldn't get it. I'm like, you don't like us because my dad won? But that's why it was so easy for me to root for Jimmy Johnson. If my dad wouldn't have won so much, I wouldn't have understood Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson wins, and just like my dad, so uh, you should not be beat up because you win a lot. Man, they made trophies. They made real trophies back in the day. These babies are heavy. With his father's prized possessions by his side, Kenny has one more stop to make. He's about to be blessed with a gift. His Daytona 500 car has finally arrived. I mean, nothing, nothing, nothing went as planned in this winter. It was, it was crazy. Now we got the car. It's like, what is this car? Hey, this is a really good car. This car qualified ninth at Talladega last year by Brian Vickers. It's, it's a really good Toyota Camry. Oh, good. I'm excited, you know. Where's that Daytona 500 car? <laughs> been here all day. Where you been? Oh. Oh. My day. baby. Man, you guys got a lot of work to do. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we got a brand new, basically, I'm looking at it, a brand new cup car. Qualified great at Talladega the last race last year, and we got to change the nose, change the tail, change the wheel tubs. And then put it together and paint it. <laughs> oh, God. Chasing Daytona is brought to you by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Goodyear, more driven. It's a special day at the Wallace House, as Kenny's wife, Kim, is celebrating her birthday. But the party will be brief. The start of Kenny's racing season is just hours away. Here you go. My schedule is ridiculous. It's, it's, it's wrong. Uh, I, I work overtime because I still want to be in the game. 
It was really nice to be home for my wife's birthday because uh, it's a little bit of a running joke with me and my wife. I, I am never home on her birthday, and I don't know why. <laughs> okay, everybody. Come here, baby. Kim just loves her nieces and nephews, so to have Dawson over there, you know. Oh! Dawson. Oh, wow. Yay! It's so fun. It's okay, Dawson. You want some ice cream? Look at here. I always get gag gifts from these girls. Well, that's always fun. Oh, they broke my brush and just left it in two pieces on my... And nobody wanted to fess up. I have a present for you, honey. Oh, I'm afraid. Okay, hold on. One second. <laughs> okay, here it is. What would be in the freezer? Oh! oh, 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 oh my Strawberry haagen ice. ice cream. <laughs> we know we're getting old when you're excited to get a brush. I, I, and, bed, and bed sheets. A lot of people can't believe just how much in love me and my wife, Kim, are. We really are. It was a lot of fun, you know, to eat ice cream and cake and uh, just, you know, celebrate her birthday. Okay, I'm leaving. Daddy's got to go make a living. I'll call you when I get to the airport. Then I'll call you when I get to the hotel. Then I'll call you when I go to bed. I'll call you five times. All right, I love you. There are a lot of times that I leave that house and I don't want to leave. But Daytona is my favorite time of the year. See you in Florida. All right, bye-bye. I love speed weeks. The dirt racing, the asphalt racing. Daytona never gets old. Kenny heads south to Florida, where he'll compete throughout the month with his dirt car. Tonight, he's at East Bay Raceway Park, a small facility outside Tampa where he'll look for a win and a clear mind. One thing I will not do this year at Daytona is I will not crawl up inside my motorhome in a ball worrying if I'm going to make the Daytona 500. That's one reason I got my dirt car down there is to keep my nights really busy because if I'm, if I'm not running dirt, I'll be sitting in the motorhome, I'll be sitting in a hotel room, or I'll be getting in trouble somewhere. All these other drivers, they go hunting, they go fishing, they go golfing. This needs a little, this needs a little bath. Yeah. Not dirty. Not me. I go dirt racing. Every dirt racer that races dirt for a living or for a hobby, they all go to East Bay. We went to East Bay last year, and we won the 35th Annual Winter Nationals. I fell in love with East Bay last year when we won. I'm going back for more. St. Louis, Missouri, give it up for Kenny Wallace. Thank you all. I appreciate you all. Track races. I'm gonna tell you what, it's like taking a, a pork chop and throwing it to a pack of dogs. I mean, we go nuts. My favorite thing about dirt racing, I must say, is when I win, and I do win. I'll get out of the car. And you'll see the people in the grandstands, and they'll be going, it really is him. It's the guy on TV. It's him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're yes! 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 You know, when they see you on TV, they just they just don't think you do anything else. Damn right, baby! Winter Nationals! We win! Woo! Good job.
job, guys. Oh, I just man. love to do it. I mean, it's a joke because we lose so much money. It's stupid. Trophy girl. You win the race, they give you $600. It doesn't even pay for the gas in the truck or the one right rear tire you had to put on. But I am addicted to dirt racing. I love it. I'm like Jeff Gordon. I get excited when I win. I know you do. Take this one. When my RAB racing team rolls into Daytona, I'm one up on everybody because I've been racing for three weeks. Toby, you've done, a, you've done an awesome job this week, Billy. Without you, I can't, I can't do what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So here's what we got to do now. You guys got to root me on because now I've got to go make the Daytona 500. Back in Charlotte. Team owner Robbie Benton is working into the night on final preparations for their Daytona 500 effort. We've only got one car. This is it. When it unloads out of the trailer, there should be music. Da da! I always tell people, I say, listen, I'm no different than you. I grew up in Arnold, Missouri. I really am a redneck. And now I've run 877 NASCAR races. Wow. I pinch myself every time I go into Daytona. Daytona is a special place for all who compete on its high banks. Teams spend countless hours meticulously preparing for its signature event, the Daytona 500. You know what our team does? We believe in one wheel. I had one steering wheel all last year. I said, we're going to have to buy one more wheel. That's true. I want the seat to fit perfect. I don't want any stone unturned. Saturday's practice will show just how far the RAB racing team has come in two short months. But for Kenny Wallace, it's also about survival. I've got to make sure that I stay away from everybody. You're not going to see me in a mean 17-car pack. I can't chance it because if I wreck out in practice, that's it, we're done. Coming to the green, 170, 170 on the water. A little over 8,000 on the RPM. Okay, cool. I don't know what to think right now. I'm nervous because I've never had a car that's competitive here. I've always had to struggle. So if everything stays the same right now, we would be locked in. If this was qualifying, we'd be locked in the Daytona 500. As dawn breaks over Daytona on qualifying day, Kenny Wallace has only one thing on his mind, speed. What's the deal to get locked in the 500 today? If we can be in the top three of the non-top 35 teams, top three. then we should be okay. My mindset, apprehension, nervous anxiety. You know, I have a chance, I have an opportunity, you know. I don't want to be the mistake. Yeah, all right. What are you doing, buddy? I'm just trying to live my dream, race the Daytona 500. Well, I'm so proud of you. I hope you make it. 
The only problem I got is I want to make it too. And if it's going to be you, you, I want it to be me. Yeah, right. And I'm, I'm sure you feel the same you way. You know what I love about life is that you're a two-time Daytona 500 winner and you want more. Yeah. Kenny Wallace comes on track, youngest of the three racing brothers from out of St. Louis. And Kenny is trying to make the Daytona 500. When you go out and you make that single car run, it's all about, can my speed lock me in the Daytona 500? Second fastest of the go or go homers in practice yesterday. And right now he is again second quickest, 29th overall. I can't ask for anything more. Thank you very much. Well, the man on the bubble is Kenny Wallace. We did everything we could do. Everything went perfect. I mean, that's, that's all the speed we got. If we lock in, we do. If we don't, too much anxiety, I can tell you that. David Stremme is now on the racetrack. It looks like he's in. Yes, David Stremme, 27th, and that will send Kenny Wallace into the duels on Thursday. It is what it is. But, I mean, I'm very focused because I don't want to feel the pain. I don't want to feel, you know, like I'm a failure. The Daytona 500, the great American race. Drivers will focus an entire career on finding its victory lane just once. Trevor Bain gets the win. Kidding me? You, uh, what? Am I dreaming right now? Dale Jarrett's gonna win the Daytona 500. Here they come, checkered flag. But to take home the Harley J. Earl Trophy, a driver must first qualify. Now, if you're locked in the Daytona 500 and you're going down there, you approach the duels as just a little heat race. But for somebody like me, a man should not have to go what I'm gonna go through. Because it's either success or failure. When I go to Daytona this year to try to make the Daytona 500 or let me take the word try out I will make the Daytona 500 I, I've learned positive mental attitude but I've attempted to make the Daytona 500 like 12 or 13 times and I've made it 10 and now Kenny Wallace another rookie in the mound and look at this battle for the final transfer spot as they come to the line Kenny Wallace Jimmy Spencer Craven inches ahead when I made that Daytona 500 in 2008 oh my lord just every piece of emotion came out of me after that race. I can't believe it. <laughs> I am so excited. It's unreal. Holy crap. The duels are complete drama. They are a make it or break it time. They can really make you sad. They can really make you happy. A Gatorade duel at Daytona checkered flag can cause massive disappointment. A tough break for Kerry. He won't be in the Daytona 500. A big disappointment. Now I'll be watching at home, and that just sucks. I'm just, uh, I want to cry. It can also create pure joy. We're the Daytona 500, brother. Can't thank y'all enough, I'll tell you. It's an awesome job. You're in the Daytona 500! Woo-hoo-hoo! to go, Brian. Way to go, buddy. Kenny Wallace by one one-hundredth of a second over Kerry Earnhardt. And let me tell you what, it's going to be the Pipers tomorrow. I'm so excited, I can't stand it. I really want to make this race, uh, but I know what's ahead of me. I mean, this, this is what I live for, the Daytona 500.